Hello again and welcome to Kerbal Scott program. Today we're going to talk about how to steer your rocket, or in technical terms, how to achieve optimal attitude control. So I'm going to build a rocket here using the four main mechanisms we have for attitude control in the game. So you've got the capsule, which allows a small amount of steering without any, uh, any extra modules. You have the RCS tank and RCS thrusters, which I'm adding. Those uh, use basically little rockets to steer the ship. And underneath this, we're going to add a, an, an old-fashioned SAS module. That's a, essentially a passive module. It doesn't let you steer it so much as keep it pointing in one direction. And then we're going to build out this rocket with a couple of big-ass fuel tanks from the Nova Punch pack and uh, some uh, vectorable thrusters here. These are the uh, these are the slightly less powerful, but they can adjust the thrust direction to help control this thing in flight. And finally, of course, we're going to add some winglets to uh, get some aerodynamic control over this vehicle. So there we are. Let's take this thing up and show you how the control scheme works. So, lift off! Now, when we're moving slowly, the wings do not work, but good thing is I've got these uh, vectorable thrust things, and as long as the engine is firing, these will help me steer. And you can see that, actually, there's a bit of wobble there, and that's mostly me being able to control the attitude left and right. Once you get up to speed, the fins will actually start working, and you can see them here, that as I hit the buttons, they uh, adjust the, their position, to control the ship based upon aerodynamics. Now, of course, these are fins, they rely on the atmosphere to give control, and uh, as we get higher up, we're gonna start losing the atmosphere. Um, the SAS unit is activated right now, and what this is mainly doing is keeping us stable. So yeah, we skipped forward, and now the atmosphere gauge is way low, we're up 45 kilometers, and this, the behavior of the ship is still relatively sprightly because even though there's no air, we had the engines. Now, without any engines, I'm going to try turning this thing. And as you see, with the only thing turning it, the only thing that's active right now is the control in the capsule. And the thing actually steers about as well as a, an oil tanker, um, which is actually fine for a lot of applications. But if I press R to turn on my reaction control system, you can see the thrusters firing, and this thing will rotate a whole lot faster. That gets me a lot more control. Now, the react, re, reaction control system, you press R to activate it. The nice thing is, reaction control system also offers translation thrusters. Now, these are accessed using the H, N, J, K, L, and I keys, and they basically let you move left and right without actually rotating the ship. They're very useful for uh, in-orbit maneuvering, uh, or docking. You see me firing back into my ship and bouncing off it. Let's uh, turn the camera around and you, we can try translating left and right using the JKL and I keys. Um, you know, these are the actually the thrusters from the Nova Punch Pack, which uh, I just discovered after making this video are in fact about five times more powerful than the stock thrusters. But uh, either way, the stock thrusters are quite capable for this kind of delicate in-orbit maneuvering. The other thing you'll notice is that I don't have uh, any other rockets on this. So the only way I'm going to get home is by using the reaction control system, basically by holding H to uh, thrust in the direction I want. I can basically uh, cal I can perform a complete de-orbit maneuver using the reaction control system alone. And yeah, as I said, these are five times as powerful as the regular thrusters, but even the regular thrusters apparently are enough to, to deorbit you. And uh, I I'm, I'm may be misinformed, but I hear that it's possible with uh, the right setups to effectively return from the moon using this. However, on Earth, using stock thrusters, you need tons of them to actually counteract gravity. And... Uh, being that these things also make it very sensitive to turning, uh, this vehicle, as stupid as it looks, is practically uncontrollable. Even the slightest touch on the rotation controls will send you spinning off. Uh, 
So even and the the translation controls left and right have a tendency to rotate your thing around the center of mass. You see here me, I'm I'm trying to do something interesting and uh, yeah, just failing generally. I'm all this time I'm like, can I land this thing soft? Can I land it soft? Can I land it soft? Well, uh, most of the time these things are so sensitive that you hit anything and you basically crash and explode. But uh, yeah. This is going to be the one and only successful landing I had. Just watch it. This is the only time I was able to land this thing without making it explode. There we go. Beautiful touchdown there, huh? Completely intact. There. Jeb would be proud. Yeah, most of the time flying this thing around, you kind of touch the wrong button and you spun out of control like that. Once again, touch, touch, touch. Keep it going, keep it going. Oh, wait, why am I spinning? Why? Oh, crash. Yeah. So yeah, um, let's see, oh yeah, let's try doing the tower landing trick. Oh, yes, another completely failed landing, mostly. At least I got my men up there. Let's try that one more time. Get up, get up, get up. Very, see, so using the translation, oh, well, yeah. Well, that's a first. Um, I hope the door isn't in the front of that thing. So yeah, let's uh, build a more stable rocket. Now what I'm adding here is another item called the Auto SAS. Now this uh, is like, a, this is not a, an active SAS unit like the other one. This actually controls all the different attitude control systems on your ship to keep it stable. So what I'm building is an SAS unit. I'm putting reaction control thrusters on top of this and I'm dropping in a small fuel tank. I'm gonna, we're basically gonna make a little lander here. And again, a little thruster, again, with a vectorable, vectorable thrust, so that we have some control there. Let's put some landing legs on it, and we basically have, you know, a nice little lander here. Now, uh, when I activate the stability control system now, this uh, automatic advanced SAS system is going to control all the rotation controls for me. So this should, thing should basically remain straight upright if I hit the T key before starting. So let's watch what happens. Turn on the a the reaction control th system. I bring the thrust up to just below what I need to maintain gravity and then use H and N to control my vertical speed. And yeah, J, K and L and I to, to thrust you laterally. And you see this thing is rock solid. This is really easy to fly. Uh, if you can't fly this, you're never going to make a moon landing. So this is actually a great thing to mess around with to actually practice your moon landing technique. The only problem in the moon is that you have a hard reference. You don't have an easy reference point to get a perfectly vertical ship. And if you're not vertical, you'll slew sideways, so you'll be burning all your RCS fuel. Yeah, I mean, you can see, you can land this thing anywhere. It's so stable. You remember the trouble I had landing on the tower even previously without the, the crazy setup? Look, I added it, I put it on top of the water tower. Um, oh, wait, no, maybe I didn't. Um, oh, yeah, wait, wait, oh. Well, let's, let's, uh, try that again. Oh, bollocks. Yeah, it, it's not perfect. You know, you still need to learn a little, uh, practice, but, you know, practice makes perfect, right? And one of these days, these pilots will be setting foot, foot on the moon. And you don't want them to mess up then when they're a million miles from home. Yeah, see, that's the way to do it. Jeb showing off his skills here. How beautiful is that? So now, going back to the Nova Punch Pack, I mentioned that these thrusters were a little overpowered. So yeah, with uh, 16 thrusters, not no, 8 thrusters, 2 fuel tanks. I'm basically able to, in effect, to lift off and uh, time accelerate. And yeah, picking up speed, just like a regular rocket, just holding the H key. This thing with just two RCS tanks and a, with a parachute as well, eight thrusters, this uh, construct will happily make orbit. So are the Nova Punch packs uh, parts a little overpowered? Yes, I think so. But, uh, you know, if that's what floats your boat, if that's what you want to do to have fun, feel free. Yeah, this thing managed to get up into orbit with just a sliver of fuel remaining. 
you actually have enough fuel there to initiate a deorbit burn and a powered landing, which is a good thing because a simple parachute landing with that extra mass typically causes things to explode. Hopefully not the capsule, but you never know. And with that, I bid you farewell. I'm Scott Manley. I'll see you in space sometime. Fly safe.